everybody and welcome back to part 43 of our trumpeter hood build. This week I'm going to be uh, adding the main mast starfish which I built several episodes ago, probably 10 or so weeks ago and it's been in storage ever since then. Uh, but I'm going to finish the main mast this week uh, by building the top mast uh, which is entirely from the Pontos set. It's all uh, turned brass and etched brass. Uh, I don't think that there are any trumpeter parts to be had for this uh, part of the build. I'm not entirely certain uh, if I'm going to be fitting it uh, this week, the top mast that is, because of its height. Uh, if I do, I'm going to have to build a little extension to the case that I've been using or the dust cover that I've been using on the model up to now. Uh, because the the top mast with its aerials on top uh, is just a little bit big for the case. Uh, I should have measured a bit more accurately when I built the case. But there we are. I can easily build some uh, extension legs uh, if I want to go ahead and fit the top mast. Uh, this has got a little bit damaged in storage and it's a lesson really that quite often parts are better fitted to the model. They're a lot safer than when they kept in storage. The box uh, got dropped actually a while ago and this was rattling around inside and it's just broken a couple of the little stays uh, off it but they're easily repaired. But I would like really to get this fitted this week uh, rather than build the top mast and put it into storage again. So we'll just see how we go. So I'm going to get straight over to the bench and we'll get the Pontos brass parts out that we need this week and we'll make a start on this top mast. Okay, so page 14 of the uh, Pontos instructions details the construction of the top mast, which is this part here. Uh, and this fits all the way through the starfish and down onto the platform uh, underneath. And I'm just trying to work out at the minute the best sequence to paint these. Obviously the starfish is black, but this mast all the way through uh, at this point is white. And I'm not sure that I'm going to be able to paint the part that goes through the starfish. Uh, it'll just scratch the paint off I think so I'm going to have to think of a different way of approaching that. So that's the actual mast and it makes quite a strong assembly when that's fitted in. It secures this platform underneath. That's all good. Okay I've had to think about how I'm going to go about this and I think what I'm going to do is to fix the actual mast into place. And the reason for that is to really stiffen up this bottom platform, which is wobbling around a little bit. It's very flimsy. So the mast will just help to locate that in its proper place. The other reason is that I'll paint, actually, I'll go back and paint the whole structure in white because it's going to be easier to just put some masking around the lower part of the mast here and then go back with the black. Uh, so that's how I'm going to go about things. Once I've got the mast in place, it gives us a stronger uh, foundation really for all these other brass pieces. So for example, this is uh, the rear stay, which slides over the mast and down onto the aft side of the starfish legs here. So we're going to have to build this up in uh, individual parts, I think, uh, and hopefully get some strength along the way. I think trying to build it all at once, I'm not going to be able to mask that bottom part of the mast off. So uh, that's how I'm going to do it anyway. So to fix this in place, I'm just going to use some thin super glue. and uh, fix it to the starfish first 
there's a step on the mast that gets it located in the right place. It won't go any further through the starfish than that. So that's got a good bond. And then I can fix this bottom platform in the same sort of way. And again, there's a step on the very bottom of the mast. And because we've got those two steps at a precise distance, it means that that platform is exactly in the right place now. Okay, so that's all primed again. And the next job will be to do the white. And I'll probably come up uh, about an inch above the starfish platform uh, at this stage. I can always uh, blow in the rest of the white later on. But I don't want to be applying paint all the way up. These little brackets that go uh, on the mast at various stages are very, very precise fits and extra coats of paint where you don't really need them uh, can obstruct the fit of them. So uh, nice soft easy coats is the order of the day with these parts. So we'll get over and get the white done. So that's the mast itself painted white. I'm going to let that dry thoroughly now and I can then get it masked off and reinstate the black on the starfish and the lower platform. That's the uh, mast masked up after the white. I'll uh, go back to the spray booth now and get the black reinstated. Right, let's see how we did with this masking. Okay, I'm happy with that. That's uh, come out better than I'd hoped. The next bit I want to do is to get the yard ready with its bracket. We've got the, in terms of the brackets that we're going to be using, we've got the gaff and its brace, which has a ring that needs to fit over this mast. We've got the pair of backstays here, again with a ring on it to go over the mast. And we'll have the wireless transmitter yard here that uh, needs a bracket fit into it again, which goes over the mast. So that's this part. It's got two opposing bends on it. So let's, we'll bend the brackets that actually slip over the yard. And, <clears throat> excuse me, the two brackets that go over the mast bend in the opposite direction. So that's the yard bracket. The thing here, of course, is to get the yard centralized. There's the faintest of marks. It won't be possible to see it from the camera, but there's a very, very faint mark, uh, which indicates the center of the yard. So I've got that positioned 
in the middle where I can now just spot some thin super glue just to secure the bracket onto the yard itself. And with that fixed, eventually it will slip down over the mast. And there's a step quite high up here on the mast where the yard drops down to. It's just worth checking that uh, one of these openings may just be slightly larger than the other one. That doesn't appear to be the case. So whichever way we fit this, it drops to the same position on the mast. So that will go in that sort of position eventually. But of course I can't fit that yet because I've got the other uh, stays and so on to fit further down the mast. Right at the top of the mast is this tiny platform. So we have the platform itself which has an underside to fold under and this railing. This railing has an integral stay uh, for the little gaff that sits on the top. So we need to be try and be careful to retain that stay. It's not going to be easy uh, because we've got to fold or bend this railing up to match the shape of this platform. So I'll bend the platform up first we have a pair of brackets or supports which will eventually be on the underside and which will rest up on the mast. And then the whole thing goes through 180 degrees back onto itself. I don't want to get a lot of glue on this because there are some little holes on the platform. So I don't want to flood that with glue. The pin at the back is for the gaff. So that will go in onto that pin. Now we need to fold this uh, railing. So we've got quite a tight circle at the back. And I just need to use the shank of a motor tool burr, which is the right sort of diameter. Onto a soft uh, spongy so that railing is just formed around that burr to the correct diameter at least I hope it is it's going to be somewhere near anyway Yeah, that's going to work. The shank of that burr was exactly the right diameter for this. I'm not going to glue that railing at this stage. I want to get the platform in its position on top of the mast. So that will go right the way at the top somewhere like that. I can't imagine climbing up the back of this mast and onto that platform. 
So that's another element ready to go on once it's been painted. So I think we've got all the components we need to start to build up the uh, elements on this mast. So I'll go and get these painted up and then we can look at assembling them onto the mast. These backstays have these blocks on and Pontos have put some double relief etching on this which needs to be folded back through 180 degrees just so it gives the impression of a thick block or a thicker block on the stay. And the way I've learned to fold these is to hold the actual stay in the pliers whilst bending the relief part of the block. If you try and do it the other way and hold on to the block and try and bend the stay, if you see what I mean, you end up uh, twisting the stay. So doing it that way isolates the stay, the delicate stay, and just allows you to bend the other half of the block through 180 degrees. And then just a quick squeeze of the two halves together. You don't need glue on those. There's no point in gluing them. They're not going to go anywhere. And then at the bottom there's a tensioning eye, which again will fold by holding on to the stay. and bending the relief detail down. Like so. And there is actually, on the bracket which fixes to the starfish arm, there's another little bracket to fold through onto itself. I nearly missed those. You can hear the sheep are going crazy again. Okay, I think that's all right. So that's the uh, back stay. So that pair of stays goes down onto a rest on the mast or a stop on the mast about an inch up from the starfish platform and then the two stays will bend down and meet the two aft uh, legs of the starfish. Right so we can start the first stage of assembly now and the first thing I want to get on is this brace for the ensign gaff which should go all the way down what's happening here is that these Pontos parts are so accurately etched that there's no room for the coats of paint that we've put on here. Even though it's a very fine coat of paint it's uh, enough to stop the Pontos Park going down. So the only way we can do that without damaging the paintwork is to just make a little cut on the ring.
and that should open it up a little bit and give us the chance to get that into its proper position. Which has to be all the way down here at the bottom. Okay, so that's where it needs to be. The gaff itself fixes to a little bracket right down at the bottom. I first want to slide the brace down onto the gaff. I'm not going to do anything with that. I'm not going to glue it. Uh, it's probably impossible to glue that without making the glue stand out. So that's the first element fixed to the mast. The next ones to go in are the two backstays. We may have the same difficulty with these backstays as we did with the uh, gaff stay further down, but that doesn't, that's uh, slid down all right. Again, I'm not going to use any glue. These stays now should bend down, and if Pontos have done their sums right, they should join to the uh, aft side here of the starfish on these two legs at the back. Which they more or less do. That's the back stairs in. They're going to need a little bit of touch up. That gaff is very insecure down at the bottom. That will be a lot better when uh, it's on the model and I've got the ensign halyard. Uh, attached to the top and that'll just put that under a bit of tension and hold it into the correct place hopefully. The next element is the wireless transmitter yard. To get this square I'm just going to sit the starfish down on the board and keep the and put the yard level and then just apply a little bit of thin super glue onto the bracket. The top part of the mast here needs to be painted obviously. I'll test fit the platform on the top. And that's an okay fit so I can put some super glue 
on the top there. This railing that fits on top of the platform it's just too exposed to fit now so what I'm going to do is get this assembly onto the model and then add these smaller details uh, once I've got that secure platform so I can go ahead and just paint the top part of this uh, mast in the white and then I can go over and we'll get it onto the model Okay, so that's all painted white, as you can see, and I just need to do a little bit of touch up of the black down at the bottom where I've got the glue for the backstays on the starfish at the back there. But uh, they'll touch in all right. So I don't want to do any more detailing of that, it's far too fragile now. It's uh, safest on the model. Right, it's time to fit this mask now before I add any more detail to it. And I'm going to be using some five minute epoxy on it. This is going to need a pretty strong bond, and super glue is not uh, strong enough, it's too brittle. I've had to open up. Uh, the hole in the mask cap and that's because it was slightly in the wrong place it was pushing the mast uh, aft and the two elements of the mast didn't line up and it just looked a bit strange so uh, I've just opened that hole up a little bit to give me the sort of adjustment that I need I'm going to have to be patient with this. This is going to take a while to set, I think. Hmm, having said that, it's not something that you would leave, though. Just looking at the screen here, how the... Uh, wireless transmitter yard looks to be at a weird angle uh, but that's just an optical illusion uh, it is horizontal the difficulty with epoxy glue is that it's pretty difficult to clean up but I don't think there's a, an option in this case we're going to have to go back in and just touch the black in again just to cover up one or two spots of glue but I can't think of another alternative you've got to use a really strong glue for this okay so that's set now I don't think that's going to move anymore. But I will give it another good hour before I do any more to this. Okay, that's nice and firm. So I'm going to leave it there. I've checked it from above. It's square on. To the ship and it's uh, and it's vertical both from the side and fore and aft so I'm going to leave that to fully harden uh, and then we can come back and add some more of the detailed parts to it Okay, so that's uh, nicely touched in 
Uh, I'm going to leave it at that. There's nothing more I want to do with that. The next job is to fit uh, six stays which go on each of the starfish legs and they reach up to the yard up here and there's also a ladder to fit on the forward sorry the aft face of the mast as well okay the mast has had a couple of hours now to set I'm going to fit these stays now so there are six all the way around the starfish okay so those first two stays are in the two on the side before I fit the aft one I've got uh, the ladder to fit up the back as well so I'll do that first these parts now are all incredibly fragile they're not going to stand any interference with them really Super glue is the most frustrating thing. It glues when you don't want it, and when you do want it to tack, it won't. Okay, so that's the ladder on eventually, and I've had to move the gaff stay to the port side. Uh, because it was obviously obstructing the ladder I couldn't fit it in with the stay where it was uh, Pontos do actually put that in the instructions but uh, I missed it and I mounted it centrally but anyway we fixed that the stays on the fore and aft side of the mast I've paired up you might be able to see there so I've joined them at the top so they're forming that V shape and I'm just hoping that that will make them a bit easier to fit ever optimistic so I'll just try and get a fixing on the starfish leg first they've gone in all right actually the idea of joining them together at the top did work it's been easier to fit those whether you can see them now if it's any easier to see with the white background and do the I can put the four braces on now so same method paired up so I'll just go around now and touch in uh, where I've got a bit of overspray on or some little glue spots here and there there are also uh, little spots here and there where the brass is exposed and that really does show up right so I think that's done as far as I want to do it anyway at the minute uh, I don't think I can add the railing around this platform at the top uh, and certainly not the air warning ray down which goes right on the top and adds probably another inch to the mast but just to make sure that this part is complete in terms of the build uh, I will go over to the bench and we'll put together the 279 air warning radar which goes on top or aerial which goes on top 
that was fitted in 1941 actually uh, quite late in the ship's career in the January refit uh, so it's not seen on an awful lot of photographs uh, but uh, it's certainly present uh, when the ship sets sail for the Denmark Strait. So we'll just nip back to the bench and we'll build that uh, radar up and then we can put it into storage ready for the final stage of the build. Right, so these are the parts uh, we need for the uh, air warning radar, which fits on top of the main mast. So I am going to build this just for completion in this video. Uh, although, as I explained, it's not, not going to be fitted yet. And it's obviously quite a complex construction. So I just need to work through how this goes together. Obviously, this is the main part of the mast. And the main component of the aerial here, which uh, will have to be folded up. This section here is the main bracket and again that's got a fold on it. This is the bracket which fits around this ball shape at the bottom and I'm following to the letter Pontos's instructions. This top end has a very slight curve on it, concave shape. and. Pontos tell us that that goes to the top, I beg your pardon, to the bottom. I don't think that makes any difference which way that goes. But this slot in this ball shape needs to fit on the inside of the bracket because the top mast slides in and settles into that groove apparently okay so just to give a bit of a close-up of that if i can so i've got the bracket going round the outside the top mast slides in from underneath through these uh, second lot of holes and the cutout is to allow the top mast to go up behind it uh, this part I can leave. The easiest way to do this, I think, is to fold the main element of the radar You can see why I'm not fitting this straight away. This is another example where the holes for the uh, mast to go through are slightly different sizes and that's to deal with the steps on this mast, the microscopic that they are there. Uh, so this will only go on one way. So we'll just hang it on. We need this little bracket here which I'll come back to uh, in a while. That needs to go on and that rests in the middle here. So that lower array has come to a stop at that point and the top the top array comes down there's a step here which leads you to suspect that this top array should go down to it but in the uh, instructions it clearly shows the array at the top of the mast up there so I need to orientate this in the correct <coughs> excuse me direction which is this way 
and we'll fix that top in place. You can see that that's snapped, which isn't ideal, but it's uh, not the end of the world. We can sort that out. So I'm just trying to keep everything square on. This piece here has to join onto this central brace. So there's a section at the top, a little hook that goes onto the top of the mast. So it has to be shaped something like that. And then just ignoring these for a moment. So this piece, when it's folded, can go in between and it just hooks onto the central brace that we fitted just now and I'll attach it at the top where it joins the mast and also right down at the bottom again where it joins onto the mast. So it looks like that and then these outer pieces should fold inwards and join on And the top one needs to come down in the same sort of way. Right, so that's the uh, 279A1 in Aerial completed. Or well, just about, there is a small cable to fit uh, from the base unit here uh, up to the bottom uh, array but I can't fit that until it's going onto the model and this is going to be fitted right at the end of the build so when it's going in its display case this will get painted up and dropped onto the top of the mast and those other little details fitted at that stage. In the meantime this is going into a, a safe box you can see how delicate it is and that's going to be easily bent so uh, that's going to be put somewhere safe out of the way uh, and we'll come back to it at the end of the build which shouldn't be too long now. Okay so that's all done for this week. Uh, the main mast is completed with the exception of the uh, air warning radar which is safely in storage now. Uh, next week I'll be doing the rig uh, between the fore and main mast. Uh, it's the wireless rig in the main. And it also goes down onto the uh, wireless office, the MFDF office, here in the between the funnels, uh, which was built a long time ago now and has had these very uh, precarious uh, aerial spreaders on the side. So we'll be tackling that. I've also got uh, some more detailing to do on the bridge, just one or two things to finish up. Uh, there's some air lookout binoculars, a couple of pom-pom directors, uh, and a little bit of railing around the forward quad mountings as well. So we'll get all that done hopefully next week. Following that we have the ship's boats to fit and then we can move on finally to uh, detailing the outside of the hull. So the outside railings, uh, the davits and cutters uh, which mount here on the aft side of the ship 
and with some uh, booms as well, some swinging booms to fit on the side. I've also got uh, a couple of 25 foot motorboats to finish and I'll video that as well and prob probably post that as an extra episode midweek uh, next week as well. But that will more or less see the model complete and ready to go in its uh, display case. So I think we've probably got another three weeks or so on this model before we can move on to something else. So that's it. Uh, I'll see you in another seven days uh, for part 44, where we'll start on that rig. In the meantime, have a great week, everybody. Enjoy your modelling if that's what you're doing. Bye for now.